Welcome back, everybody. We'd love to introduce you to uh, some very special Iowans. And joining us here this morning, we have uh, artisan Carrie Jo. Thank you for coming in Good. this mm -hmm. morning. And you have a really uh, inspiring story just about uh, kind of following your passions as an artist and a dreamer. So talk a little bit about kind of how this all started for you. Well, I've done a lot of things in my life. I've started a couple companies. I've, I've done a lot of things, but my, as even when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be an artist. Okay. And now that my children are gone, it's time to follow that dream and follow that passion. So you're doing the artistry in addition to your other professional life. Correct, okay. correct. So talk about uh, white light artistry and kind of how that came to be for you, just the type of art that you do and the mediums that you choose. Okay, well white light artistry came about that I had a horrible car accident when I was 17 okay. where I had a near-death experience and was in the white light. Really? Luckily, I was able to come back and share that experience with other people. Okay. And as I was coming up with this new adventure, white light has always been an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what a perfect name, white light artistry. Okay. So that's how it came about. I come up with ideas all the time. I just idea after idea after idea. So when I started working with different mediums, I've tried a lot of different things, but I really fell in love with alcohol inks. Alcohol inks. Okay. Alcohol What's inks. What's so special about alcohol inks? Um, the, they're very intense they're colors. They're magical. They're, they are, they really are <laughs> magical, magical because you can create so many different looks and effects and designs with these alcohol inks. You just never quite know what you're gonna come up with as you're using them. Seriously, okay. It looked very vibrant. Yeah. Yes, very mm -hmm. vibrant. Mm -hmm. So talk about, you said you've been interested in art ever since you were little, and, and how have you kind of exercised that artistic side of yourself throughout these years, kind of before you even got into doing it uh, a little more seriously? Well, I first started out as a technical illustrator and went and got a degree in that. I wanted to go to Disney and draw Mickey. Okay. But when I graduated, he wasn't hiring. <laughs> <laughs> I went to John Deere and drew tractors for a long time. All right, did that you count, really? Yes, that I did. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I did parts catalog drawings. Oh, well, I'm sure, fashion way. Well, I'm sure there are thousands of people that have seen your work. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, not sure I would claim it. Oh, I would. Yeah. <laughs> that is so and great. then I In got Iowa especially. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And then I got a marketing degree, and then I started a company, a marketing company, and I had that for 23 years. So I was able to exercise my creativity and marketing campaigns and that constant idea generation. Well, we're going to talk about your art specifically okay. here in just a few minutes, but first I want to talk about just your, your just your thoughts on just on how important it is to follow those passions and the role that art has kind of played in your life through that. Oh, the thing that it's helped me with is my stress. Yeah. I mean, I'm running an international manufacturing and distribution company and the stress has been and art is a way to release that stress. Right, and we talked about that earlier today, yes. trying to that be one of the key components mm -hmm. in trying to keep for your blood pressure down, for yes. example. Just we talk that, about that kind of regularly. That's simple, right? absolutely, yeah. Yeah. absolutely. And so whether that passion is riding bikes or artwork or music or whatever, that helps me, and I think it helps mm -hmm. other people just to kind of calm down after a long day's stress. Yeah. Right, how many hours do you spend uh, doing art type projects? on a regular basis, like say every every week or so? Well, I try to balance it between work and art. I would say I do at least four to five hours a day. Oh, a day? A day, yeah. Wow, okay. So I work about eight hours a day and then I do art. Okay, so let's talk about, and you obviously uh, I, the alcohol inks are a big thing for you, <laughs> and you've brought some beautiful pieces here. We're also going to be talking about um, the reception that you're having uh, later this week, but right now let's focus on the pieces that you brought in and kind of your inspiration and some of the materials that you use and maybe, you know, a little tip on a technique or that. A tip on a technique. Well, alcohol ink, anybody can use, anybody can do. Um, it's readily available, fairly right. inexpensive. This piece is done on actually white tile, okay. six by six tile. Okay. Something real simple. And so you can you can mix colors. On a ceramic can, tile. On a ceramic tile. Look at and that. Then, then I actually, when it's colored in, then I go in and draw it. And, and what we call embellishing. Okay. So you can add dots and flowers and. Using paint pens, yes. I would imagine. Yes, yes. And so this is also on a ceramic tile. The little one, okay. okay. The little one. 
Take a look at that one there. And it looks like they're uh, very, the, the alcohol inks, they're able to be really bold or they're able to be semi-transparent. Uh, how does that work? Absolutely, it's, it's, it's a really unusual medium. It looks like it, yeah. Um, it's kind of a combination between watercolor and, and like a real watered down acrylic. Okay. But the alcohol ink has such intense pigment in it that it maintains that color. Like this particular piece is only two colors of alcohol ink. Just two. Wow, look at Just that. Just two colors. And so you can see by diluting the alcohol ink, you can see by adding, you know, intensifying the color, it just creates many, many, many different effects. Different layers. And almost, is this, yeah. a, this uh, you can use it on a variety of different surfaces. Yes, but it has to be like a ceramic type surface. Or this paper that I use is what they call, it's a polypropylene paper called Yupo. Okay, so and it's like a plastic. Plastic paper. Plastic paper. paper. Yes. Right. And I kind of had more fun with it, and like in this particular piece, and these other two. This one here. I have. Um, yes, it's. I've cut it. I burned it. You, I mean, you can burn it. You can melt it. You can cut it, and then I like to layer it. Just gives you uh, just a, a whole different array of possibilities. Doesn't yes. It? Mm. Yes. Yeah. And, and then so look at look this at that. piece on the easel here. That has a. I, I thought that was metal at first. Yes. That's what a lot of people think when they see it. And this is the, this is the, the plastic That's paper. type paper. That's the plastic paper. And then are you that? just using regular uh, cutting tools like an X-Acto blade and different things to cut through the material? Do you have to have special I, blades? I use soldering irons. Oh, kind of Soldering melts, irons, like X-Acto okay. knives. Very um, nice. The fun thing about this alcohol ink is it's highly flammable. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you get all kinds so of, yeah. A little shish kebab in <laughs> the art studio. Yeah, but at the same time, it probably gives you an effect that's oh, very unique as well. Oh, it gives you a beautiful well. effect, yeah. yes. So there's just all kinds of different things there's you can so do with it. so many possibilities. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Just, the nice thing about this medium is that it doesn't have to create anything. It just kind of creates itself, and you just keep going with it. Okay, well, people can come and see these uh, works uh, yes. in person. At, you talk about your artist reception that's happening this Wednesday. There's an artist reception at Capitals. Um, chiropractic and Rehabilitation Center. That's it's from down six, there. Yep, yes, down it's from six village. to seven on Wednesday, and a lot of my art will be for sale. But um, Abby Sawyer, oh and, sure, yeah, and her husband um, Chris D um, Chris Lorang, uh, they have had done this for artists over the past seven years since they've opened. And so they've had more than 30 artists come in, and uh, I know Abby's dad, and he's like, Tom Sawyer, he says, well, I said, Tom, I'm gonna start this. I wanna yeah. do this, follow this passion. He's like, well, let me call Abby, and, we'll, and before I knew it, I had a show. How about so, that? So, yeah, so it's really exciting. So several awesome. different pieces are down at the clinic. Okay, well, we're looking forward to that. That's this is cool. your first reception, too, really. This is Isn't my your first, first big showing? Yes. Okay, congratulations yes. Thank to you. them. Thank you. Now, if people wanna visit you online and see more of your work and so forth, they can follow you on Facebook and yes. your what talk about your website. And the website, which will be coming up. Okay. <laughs> it's not like they're the always there. It's, there almost, right? it's almost live. Yeah. Is whitelightartistry.com. Okay. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Thank your work you is beautiful and you. vibrant, and uh, I look forward to you know seeing more of your pieces on Wednesday night. Awesome. So. How about Thank you. Alcohol inks. Never heard of that before. Yeah. yeah. And Yupo. 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 Am I saying that right? Yupo paper. All right. Yupo. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you so much for having me.